Today I'm unboxing and putting to the test a piece of technology I'm incredibly excited about. The Revo Point Mirico Plus 3D Scanner. It's an all-in-one standalone device so you can scan, process and edit without even needing a PC. We're going to see if it lives up to the hype by unboxing it, doing some real world scanning challenges from beginner to advanced. I want to see if it's really as accurate as Revo Point have promised by 3D printing a part that needs to be millimeter perfect. I'm gonna start with an unboxing. I've got my trusty little handy camera here to show you some good behind the scenes footage. Satisfying. So we've got the box here, this is nice. We've got a nice little carry case there. Oh, we've got some goodies inside. This looks like an electronic turntable, USB cable, HDMI adapter, little pop-up tripod, a lens cloth, USB adapter. That's everything that's in there. What's this? So we've got a nice velvet bag. And that looks like a calibration plate. We've got quick start guide here. Um, lots of tracking markers. A marker topper. We've got a nice little, uh, I don't know if it's 3D printed or not. It looks very smooth. Um, I presume this is for putting on the turntable to have a first experiment at scanning with. 65, uh, 65 watt charger. We've got USB-C to C cable. Oh, this is quite heavy. This looks like the scanning unit itself. So we've got a screen on the back, folds all the way around. And we've got all the lenses here for the different scanning modes. A play button on the top, charge port on the side, power button on the other side, a tripod mount in the bottom. Let's just try powering it on, see if it's got any charge. Looks good. Calibration board kit. Not sure what this is. Looks like we've got four boards here. And finally, we have a very nice little, I think it's a carrying case. Let's have a look. No, it's not a carrying case. So the scanner comes with this nice little bus that you can use for your first scan. We'll just put the 3D marker mat on the turntable. So the scanner touchscreen interface is actually really easy to use. If you press settings here, you can choose from the top either point clouds, photogrammetry, or global marker. We'll stick with point clouds. Accuracy high standard or high speed. You'll see with the high speed we get the option to choose a body or large object type. You can also choose if you want to collect colour information as well or not. So if we go for accuracy high, um, we want alignment to be feature, because there's lots of features on this model. Uh, object type can be general or as opposed to a dark object, which is for scanning dark things. Uh, we don't need colour information because this is black and white. And that's it. So other than that, you get to choose from near or far. Uh, so that's like basically a closer lens or a more of a wide angle lens, depending on the size of the object you're scanning. This little thing here is the exposure. So if it's red, it means it's overexposed. You really want to have a mixture of red and blue. And up here, you can see as we move the scanner closer or further away, 
you've got a red or a green marker that shows you if you're in the optimum area for scanning. And this is the actual scanning window here. This will show the point cloud as we start to scan. We press record on here to start the first scan. And we can see now the green area shows what's being captured in the point cloud. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to scan this uh, for about three revolutions. We're going to scan this mode first. Then I'm going to hold the scanner higher up and do another revolution. And then I'm going to hold the scanner lower down and we're going to do another revolution. I'll show you how it looks in a second. So straight from the camera, you can actually see um, a copy of the point cloud, uh, just to check that you haven't missed uh, any areas. You can zoom in with a two finger swipe and rotate with a single finger. Once you're happy, you can press the tick. So from here, you can actually do the processing on the camera, because what we need to do is convert the point cloud into a mesh that we can use. So you can either click one tap edit. If you press fusion, you can actually change the settings yourself. So you can reduce the point distance if you want a more accurate scan or increase it if you just want a low resolution mesh. All the processing and the storage of all the models can be done actually on the device itself or you can connect it to your computer to do the processing on your computer which might be a bit faster. So here we are in the Revo scan software. This comes free with the scanner and this is the actual point cloud of the object that I've scanned. Now from here obviously it doesn't look great to start with but there's lots of things we can do to clean this up. So from here, the first thing I'd do is press isolation. And basically what this will do, you see all these little blobs here, just all around. Um, we're gonna detect those. And then if you click apply, it basically gets rid of them all. Clicking mesh takes you to this view here. And as you can see here, the scan is actually very, very clean. It's captured everything really, really accurately. I mean, this model is probably only like 12 centimeters tall something like that and you can see it's captured everything even down to there's a little mark across the head that looks like a bit of a, a scrape during the, the model making process and then when you're ready you can export the mesh so I've just imported the mesh into blender what we'll do we'll straighten it up so I'm going to press my three on the keypad R to rotate uh, we'll just try and get this guy straightened up G to grab let's move into the ori origin just rotate them a bit here as well this way. Um, we'll add in a cube and just move it to the bottom. We're just gonna tidy that base up. So basically I'm just ensuring that I've covered all the nastiness underneath. So we'll press that. We're going to add a, a Boolean modifier. We're gonna use the cube. And now you can see we've got a nice tidy finish to the model. So the model's ready really for 3D printing. One last thing you could do if you wanted to is use, we've got, um, as you can see down here, we've got two and a half million faces, which is quite a lot. Um, so we could add a decimate modifier. Okay, so using a ratio of 0.1, we've actually got rid of two and a quarter million faces and really the model still looks great at this, uh, this resolution. So you can see my daughter, she's um, actually just moving around me now. Uh, we're just trying to get a nice clean scan of my face and body. Ready to take into Blender. Just drop this straight into a scene in Blender. Um, it's really very quick and easy to do. This is a scene I've just downloaded from Blender Kit. I've literally just dropped the model straight in here, um, ready to render. Just gonna get the camera set up and we'll do a quick test render. And here you go, you can see how quickly and how nicely the model integrates with all the lighting and everything. So as you can see, this is quite an old car and we currently have a phone mount to put our mobile phone on. But this actually uh, covers some of the driver information display. So you can't see what radio station you're, you're looking at. So I thought it might be a good idea if we can make some sort of mount that fits over this lip um, that we can use to put the uh, mobile phone on instead. So the next step is to actually get an accurate scan. So I'm just setting up so the object height is dark and the accuracy is set to standard. And you see I've actually blocked out the windscreen um, light with some cardboard just to help the infrared lights from the scanner pick up a good scan result. So I'm just moving around the um, actual area now with the scanner just trying to get everything covered. I'm just waiting for everything to go green so I know I've got a nice clean scan of that whole area. 
So I've imported the scan into the computer. As you can see, the cardboard's uh, on top, uh, but the actual dash has come out really, really nicely. Nice clean scan, and we've got an accurate representation of that curve. So the next step is to export out from Revo Scan and get it into Blender. Now it's in Blender, you can actually see how clean that scan actually is. Uh, this curve on top, very, very accurate. Um, you can see how difficult this would be to recreate in real life. Um, and how many measurements you'd need. So I've just built um, a simple model in Blender. Um, it's basically just a cube with um, some Boolean cutouts here that you can see just to make some holes and cuts in it. Uh, and I've overlaid it over the curve in the dash and I've used a Boolean modifier to cut out the dash so I get an exact fit of the model in inside the car. Here's the finished model. It's now nice and clean. It's ready for 3D printing, and hopefully this shouldn't uh, take long to put out on a 3D printer. Let's get it over to 3D printer and start it printing out. This is a roughly sort of 20 minute print on uh, my 3D printer over here. And you can see how beautifully this model fits on that curve. It's a very precision fit, uh, and it holds the phone great. Okay, so I've been using this scanner for a few weeks now. What are the pros and cons? Firstly, the cons. You can't use it outside in daylight as the Miraco Plus uses infrared structured light, which is very sensitive to sunlight and UV. This is a limitation of all infrared based scanners. Secondly, anything metal or reflective needs to be covered in scanning spray. This covers the surface with a fine white powder to give a matte finish that the scanner can see. Now the pros. The scanner can handle everything from tiny detailed objects to large scale projects. The fact you can do all of this without a PC, thanks to its powerful internal hardware, makes it incredibly portable and versatile. So if you're looking for a professional grade scanner that's also user friendly, the Miraco Plus is definitely one to consider. I'll drop a link in the description if you want to check it out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.